Any, okay, are there any English majors in the audience? Okay, you don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you were an English major. Okay, what do you do for a living? I'm a housewife. Aspiring writer, housewife. Oh. Um, so we have an English major. Do we have any folks, you, you, you college oriented people? How many people are in a science or technology field as your major? I studied the language of it, I think math. <laughs> math is sort of a laugh. I used, to, I used to really look down on math until I started reading XKC. Um, now I accept math as a genuine science. Because math is funny as all hell. <laughs> Any science that is funny is okay. I mean, math always seemed boring, but he made it fun. Chemistry, you can blow shit up. You know, biology, it makes you squeal. It's great. Physics, you can make cannons. <laughs> but, uh, maybe that's why. I, I have a personal theory that Folks who tend toward the sciences, who tend toward technology, who tend even toward writing, tend to be the creative sorts, the imaginative sorts, the people whose minds work a little bit outside the norm. And maybe that's why furry fandom seems to appeal to them in the same way that, that science fiction fandom appeals to people. We like to think outside of not just the box, but outside of the world, outside of the known universe. Looking more into the unknown, the fantastical, the cute, the fluffy. Any other question? Comment? You folk who have not been to furry conventions before, mm -hmm. have you any inclination to go to one? I've but been then, wanting to go to one. What? I've been wanting to go to one. You've been wanting to go to one? Yeah. Here, but I just been. I just don't know. Oh, there's one for you. One for you. There you go. Oh, yeah. oh, John. Yeah. yeah. Just, okay. just a little tiny. Hint. At least you're capitalized. <laughs> what I was going to say. You remember this question? I was going to bring up that episode of CSI. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, yes, yes, yes. CSI episode. <sighs> Why not? When that episode, first off, that episode came out at about three years after the famous Vanity Fair mm. article came out. Yeah, the older furries went, mm. That's what the whole question was for that first convention. Have had any inspiration for our... All fun. the inspiration for it. As I said, first impressions are lasting impressions. And this gentleman showed up at Midwest Fur Fest. It was the Chicago area's first convention. Um, they had been a furry track at a convention called DuckCon. <laughs> and they, at one point, said, there's almost as many furries as, as, as Trekkies at this time. We'll, we'll make our own convention out of it. They would, and they've been very successful. This gentleman showed up who proclaimed himself to be a journalist writing for Vanity Fair. His name was George Gurley. <laughs> <laughs> now, on one hand, you really got to feel sorry for him because he suffered in high school with that name. I mean, let's face it. Your name is Gurley. <laughs> but, he had apparently heard about this convention in California, which at about this time was in its decline. People had been fed up with it, they'd had enough, and they simply weren't going anymore. And they didn't like that atmosphere. But Mr. Gurley was looking for that atmosphere. <laughs> uh, he came to Midwest Fur Fest and he couldn't find it. He looked everywhere and couldn't find it. So he did what any good journalist will do. He made it up. You read that article, there's a bunch of stuff in there that had nothing to do with the convention that we've never actually been able to corroborate had anything to do with anything real. But it got printed in Vanity Fair, which as we know, that's, that's like the Time Magazine for housewives. <laughs> it is, you know, no, it is not. You, you know your housewife, but. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a housewife with half a brain. Ah, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, ah, that, you said it. I know. <laughs> I'm a scientist, Yeah, you're right. 
So uh, that article kind of gives a black eye that has never quite healed. Because furries, furries are people who get in these costumes and have sex. All right, that's like saying basketball fans are people who dress up as Michael Jordan and have sex. <laughs> Which I find strangely irrelevant. <laughs> We're going to get back on track. Um, oh my. Anyway. Boy, I wish George Takei were here. Oh my. <laughs> anyway, he, yeah, he had lots of that. Are there people who put on fursuits and have sex? There probably are. As I said, young people they sometimes do some crazy things. That is a fact because they photograph them. No, they do. Okay, I don't look at those web pages. Now, I have worn a fursuit in the past. I found it agonizingly uncomfortable. Very, very, very hot, sweaty. I was dizzy after a very short order. Um, I could barely see out of the thing. And damn, did it change. Someone has described wearing a fursuit as walking around wearing your sofa. <laughs> <laughs> in our fursuit parade, Every year, of which there are more than 800 costumers, of that 800, we have an average of three every year who drop from heat exhaustion, just walking from one end of the convention center to the other. Oh, we mm. actually have to have ambulance crews on hand because these people go down. And it can be really difficult because here you've got this coyote with this happy big grin on his face and these wide eyes, and all of a sudden he stops and sits down and doesn't move. It's like, Look how happy he is. <laughs> we have four days, like he's starting to smell. <laughs> um, as an aside, by the way, if at any time you ever see a person or any costumer whose face is hidden, sitting down and not really moving a lot, check to see if they're breathing. And if they're breathing, it's perfectly acceptable to get in front of the eyes and say, are you okay? <laughs> if it doesn't answer, call security. I've had that happen. But anyway. These things take a lot of physical stamina just to wear. If you've got the stamina to do the old oomph oomph in one of them, hey, more power to you. You're in better shape than I am. Right? <laughs> but is that what the fandom is all about? No. The fandom is not all about any one thing. There are so many facets to it. 98% you know, of the facets are perfectly clean and instant. 2% are over there. Remember? <laughs> and we keep them over there, except for the ones they put on the internet. Mm. <clears throat> Unfortunately, that seems to be all that people see. So CSI came out, and for those of you who may not have seen it, it was a really bad episode. We were laughing like hell at it. The plot was stupid. The science, oh god, don't get me started on the science. <laughs> um, and the fursuits were awful. These were the shittiest things I have ever seen in all my day, and I was watching this going, okay, they could have at least put us in it. <laughs> they couldn't make it look believable. They had the one guy in there, the, the, the loser wearing the cat suit, who was oh, yeah. the question and wouldn't take that off. And that ain't gonna happen. For one thing, cop goes up to a fursuiter, you're gonna take that head off. Uh, if not, the chairman of the convention is going to be behind you with an electric cattle prod. <laughs> which I also find strange later on. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That was, yeah, that was one of the ones. Uh, so the CSI episode also gave us a bit of a black eye. Although I couldn't help noticing that, what was the name of the, the one cop, the good cop, the one who's always, I, I don't watch the show. The smart one? Yes. Grissom. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Mr. Gristle. He was, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever. He, he was at least kind of defending. He said, well, this is a force. You don't want to hear your arms. But now it's a force. Okay, you're all right. This is just a human situation. This is just a human situation. Exactly. It's just a human situation. And there was another thing. Um, anybody, anybody not seen the episode? Don't. <laughs> I've only seen bits and pieces of it. You probably saw the bad. I saw the case by Murray that Here's, okay, here's the concept, right? You have a guy in a raccoon suit. The head of the suit, <coughs> the nose is like out here. The, the gist of it is he's dead and they find synthetic fur in his stomach.